Hello friends, this video on air and water pollution part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, how should the sewage be disposed and what can happen if it is not properly disposed? So, inappropriate sewage disposal can cause pollution. Now, what do we mean by inappropriate sewage disposal? So, if this sewage which contains so many harmful and poisonous substances, if they are directly disposed into water, they are indirectly going to come back to us. So, the same excreta and the same feces are going to come back to us in the form of one of these. Either the water where you take bath will contain any of these or the water you drink or the water which you use for cooking. So, we are only going to get it back. So, let us see how the sewage discharge can harm the aquatic life. What will happen if we directly dispose the sewage into a water body? Now, inside that water body, a lot of aquatic animals live. Now, sewage discharge into water bodies. This will cause microbes to cause biodegradation of organic matter. Now, the sewage contains a lot of organic matter. So, the organic matter is biodegraded that means it is broken down into simpler forms and this breakdown is done by microbes primarily by bacteria and fungi so all these microbes they help in biodegradation of organic matter now for doing this biodegradation or for decomposition they need oxygen so they start utilizing a lot of oxygen so as a result the same thing the oxygen gets used up now these animals they also need oxygen now when there is no oxygen what will happen to them they will start dying so lack of oxygen will kill the aquatic life so therefore sewage discharge should not be done directly into water bodies because they contain a lot of organic matter which can be further broken down so and breakdown needs oxygen now the question is then what can be done so the sewage needs to be treated before it is disposed of and how is it treated? For that, let us discuss the sewage treatment. So, the sewage needs to be treated in sewage treatment plants before disposal. Now, what happens in sewage treatment plant? Here, the more toxic substances present in the sewage gets converted into less toxic ones. So, that at least the harmful effects can be reduced. So, the entire treatment happens in two stages that is primary treatment and secondary treatment. So, in primary treatment what happens is whatever unwanted bigger particles are present, they are physically removed from the sewage. So, that is primary treatment. And in secondary treatment, whatever organic matter is present, that is broken down into simpler forms with the help of microbes. And at the end of secondary treatment, whatever is left out, that has very less content of harmful substances. So, that can be directly disposed of into water bodies. So here we are not going to talk about the entire primary and secondary treatment but let us see what happens. How exactly it is done? We will not discuss the complete thing but at least I will give you an overview. So let us start with the primary treatment of sewage. So here particles are physically removed from the sewage by using one of the following process filtration so here what happens solid particles can be removed from a liquid by passing it through any such substance which has pores on it so the pores will allow the liquid to pass through it but it will stop the solid for example when you prepare tea so that you separate the tea leaves from the liquid so, for that you use a sieve. So, that sieve has small pores. So, that will allow the liquid to pass through it. But it will stop the tea leaves from passing through it. So, the same concept applies here also. So, whatever bigger particles will be present in the sewage, that will get blocked by filtration. The next process is sedimentation. In sedimentation, what happens is the heavier particles are separated from the liquid so whichever particle will be heavier they will settle down at the bottom under the influence of gravity and then the clean liquid from the above can be poured out can be taken in some other vessel so these are with the help of these two methods all big particles big unwanted particles can be removed from the sewage so you see this is how filtration happens by passing it through pores of a filter. So this filter could be somewhat like this. This is an laboratory setup of a filter. And in sedimentation, so when you take 
the entire sewage initially it will be like this where there are particles suspended everywhere in the uh, sewage now after a period of time the heavier particles will settle down so these are the heavier ones and then you get a clear uh, comparatively clearer uh, liquid above so this is the product this is the final product of primary treatment of sewage and then this is taken ahead for secondary treatment now we will not discuss in detail about secondary treatment but i think you got an idea that how the sewage is treated so that the at least the more toxic substances can be removed out of it now with this we got a fair idea about what are the different causes that cause water pollution. So let us quickly look at how water pollution can be controlled. Now some of the ways by which we can control water pollution are proper sewage disposal after sewage treatment. So the sewage should be properly treated. Now, now when it is completely treated only then it should be disposed of. Segregation of wastes. Now waste products should be segregated so that the biodegradable waste products which can be broken down further, they should not be disposed of into water. Because if they are disposed of into water again, there will be lack of oxygen because biodegradation activity will need oxygen. Shallow ponds should be preferred over bigger ones for domestic and industrial wastes. Because shallow ponds are like old ponds, they do not have lot of water. But big ponds, they have lot of water. So basically, if even after proper sewage treatment, after that also when you are planning to throw the wastes or dispose them into a water body, try to choose a pond which is smaller and shallower so that the amount of water that will get impacted will be less. Avoid the use of fertilizer before rain, that is very important. Fertilizer should be applied timely, so it should not be followed by irrigation or rainfall. So you should try from your end that you do not apply fertilizer just before rain. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.